Hi everyone, and welcome to today's lecture on the amazing human body. I'm your biology educator, and together, we'll be taking a journey through the organs of the human body. We'll learn about their structure, function, and the vital roles they play in keeping us alive and healthy. Before we dive in, take a moment to observe our opening slide, showcasing the complexity and intricate design of the human body. Are you ready? Let's begin our exploration with the heart. As you can see, our first organ of focus is the heart, which is the center of our circulatory system. The image before you presents a beautifully detailed illustration of the heart, with its four chambers, multiple valves, and connecting blood vessels. The heart is roughly the size of your fist and is situated in the middle of your chest, slightly tilted to the left. It's responsible for pumping oxygen-rich blood throughout the body, providing the necessary nutrients to every cell. Now let's delve deeper into the structure of the heart. The image here shows a cross-sectional view, illustrating the three layers that compose the heart wall. From the outermost to the innermost layer, we have the epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. The epicardium is the thin, protective layer, while the myocardium is the thick, muscular layer responsible for the heart's contractions. Finally, the endocardium is a thin, smooth layer that lines the inner chambers and valves. Here, we have an image that highlights the four chambers of the heart. The upper chambers, called the atria, receive blood from the body and the lungs. The right atrium receives oxygen-poor blood from the body, while the left atrium receives oxygen-rich blood from the lungs. The lower chambers, called the ventricles, pump blood out of the heart. The right ventricle pumps the oxygen-poor blood to the lungs, and the left ventricle pumps the oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. In this image, we can see a detailed view of the heart's valves, which are essential for maintaining the one-way flow of blood. We have the tricuspid valve, which separates the right atrium from the right ventricle, the pulmonary valve, which separates the right ventricle from the pulmonary artery, the mitral valve, which separates the left atrium from the left ventricle, and the aortic valve, which separates the left ventricle from the aorta. These valves open and close in response to pressure changes within the heart, ensuring that blood flows in the correct direction and preventing backflow. The next picture presents a visual representation of the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle consists of two main phases, systole and diastole. Systole is the phase during which the heart's ventricles contract, pumping blood into the aorta and pulmonary artery. Diastole, on the other hand, is the phase when the ventricles relax and refill with blood from the atria. These pressure changes within the heart chambers determine the opening and closing of the heart valves, orchestrating the continuous rhythmic flow of blood. Now, let's explore the heart's electrical system, also known as the conduction system. This image depicts the major components of this system, which is responsible for generating and coordinating the electrical signals that control the heart's contractions. We begin with the sinoatrial node, also known as the SA node, often called the heart's natural pacemaker. It generates electrical impulses that spread through the atria, causing them to contract. The impulses then reach the atrioventricular node, also known as the AV node, which serves as a relay station, allowing time for the atria to fully contract before the ventricles contract. From there, the impulses travel through the bundle of his, bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers, ultimately causing the ventricles to contract in a coordinated manner. This image offers a comprehensive view of blood circulation within our body. The process can be divided into two main loops, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. Pulmonary circulation involves the flow of oxygen, poor blood from the heart to the lungs, where it picks up oxygen and releases carbon dioxide. In systemic circulation, oxygen-rich blood is transported from the heart to the rest of the body, delivering oxygen and nutrients to cells and tissues before returning to the heart as oxygen-poor blood. This continuous cycle is crucial for maintaining life and sustaining our body's various functions. Finally, let's discuss the importance of maintaining a healthy heart. Our heart is a vital organ, and its proper functioning is crucial for our overall health and well-being. As you can see in this slide, a healthy lifestyle plays a significant role in supporting our heart's health. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, stress management, 
and avoiding smoking are all essential components of heart health. By adopting these habits, we can help prevent heart-related illnesses and enjoy a higher quality of life. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of the human heart. I hope you found this lecture informative and engaging. In our upcoming lectures, we will continue our journey through the human body, discovering the wonders of each organ and the crucial roles they play in our existence. Until then, take care and stay curious.